Hey everybody, Watch This Review here, and tonight I'm going to be looking at Wendigo from the Marvel Legends Fing Fang Foom line. That's a Hasbro figure. Um, Wendigo is almost is an impressive almost 8 inches tall. Um, as far as Hasbro figures go, he's pretty nice looking. But um, there's a sparsity in paint, and then they use most many of the same joints that... Um, well, the same joint techniques they use in some of the other figures that a few people have criticized, but honestly, I think he's a pretty nice looking figure. Um, in terms of scale, let me just quickly toss up your standard six inch figure, which in this case is the Spider-Man from the Sentinel series, the first appearance. And while we're at it, let's toss in one other figure. The slightly smaller Wolverine from the two pack the face-off with Sabretooth, which is significant because this is the first appearance Wolverine, and Wolverine's first appearance happened to be, well actually debatably it's in either Incredible Hulk 180 or 181, depending on how you look at it. He appears in like the last panel or two of 180, then 181 he actually enters the fight, but he was dispatched to get involved in the fight between the Incredible Hulk and Wendigo. Wendigo himself actually appeared about 20 issues earlier in another Incredible Hulk, but... Yeah, just see that? Massive, massive figure. I think a lot of the, um, well, maybe most of the line was that size for the Fin Fang Foom series, but some people have mentioned it's kind of cheap. I actually heard two dissenting opinions on this. I was like trying to figure out whether or not I wanted this figure, but actually I heard, I think I ordered it before I saw um, Shard and Mrs. Review on it, but before that, um, I think it was J-Train possibly mentioned that he was just a kind of cheap figure because he felt really light, but in reality he weighs like maybe one and a half pounds, so... That's pretty heavy for a figure, especially a figure you get independently. In terms of articulation, you've got a little at the wrist. It'll only really rotate. I mean, you can see that the joint here is like intended to um, twist, but it really doesn't. Actually, it does a bit more than I thought, but just because the sculpt is like so extreme. Um, by the way, I adjusted my lighting in case you anybody noticed the shadow over here. It's from where my actual camera is. I switched over here so I wouldn't constantly be stumbling in front of it. So I'm just gonna see how this works for this review and maybe going forward keep it like that. Now this has the kind of elbow I sort of like where you have this good amount of articulation all right here at the elbow. Although you kind of lose out in the double joint but because of the sculpt here it might have been for the best. Shoulders are kind of iffy. This one I have a real tough time moving, so I'll just display this one real quick. I mean, they'll go up a good amount. It actually goes up for, there it goes. But you have just a lot of resistance because of the way the figure is sculpted. So expect to struggle with that quite a bit if you end up picking this one up, which I probably would recommend just because he's a pretty cool character. The Wendigo mythology is kick-ass, too. It actually originates from a old um, Native American legend about cannibalism. It's also a psychological condition. There's like a whole phobia of eating human flesh and stuff in some Indian cultures, supposedly. But as you can see, no waste. He has a torso joint, which honestly is a good choice. Because it gives you a more... Um, detailing in the waist. Uh, legs kind of cheap. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat that. I mean, it won't really do a whole lot, but it'll spin. I mean, it should go up, but it really doesn't. And then, of course, it, this should twist, but I've never really needed to because this kind of twists on its own. Um, knee is a double joint. Pin joint, obviously. 
and you have a single point of articulation at the foot but it's just mostly a twist it will go up and down a bit but once again the sculpt kind of impedes it uh tail is not articulate would have been kind of cool if it was but it's not although i mean it's like so neutral it doesn't really make a big difference um when it goes story basically is that he is most recent of many victims afflicted with the curse of the Wendigo, which turns him into this giant cannibalistic monster, who actually makes a pretty cool appearance in X2 Wolverine's Revenge, where you go through a whole cave sequence, and at one part you have to like get by him, but if you try to move up close to him, he'll end up getting killed, so you have to go around killing guards and then just like dragging the corpses to him so he'll feast and then walk him back few feet which I thought was just tremendously kick-ass. This actual boss fight wasn't as cool. It reminded me of um, Super Mario 64 where you fight Bowser and you grab him by the tail and you have to throw him off at something. And if he just falls off the platform he just jumps right back up. He has to hit these one specific things along the side. My only real complaint is, I guess, I don't think he looks really badass enough. I mean, cause the Wendigo is just like an incredibly badass character, capable of going hand to hand with the Hulk and just um, going crazy on everybody. So I expect kind of a lot from the sculpt. And the face, I don't think, really does it. And I don't like the way that the hair is sculpted. Other than that, you know, it's a really solid looking figure. He is an incredible character. Also, I think there's actually a little production line there. That kind of sucks, but other than that, the paint, I don't have any real paint errors in this figure, but I mean, the way that it's done, it's only just like minor toning, so you wouldn't really expect anything. The only places they could screw up are at the eyes and the um, mouth there, and as you can see, it looks pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, definitely pick this guy up. I mean, he's probably the one of the coolest looking ones from the wave. If not the coolest. Which I can't remember what would also have been a contender for the coolest, but, um... Yeah, that's basically it. Actually, I've still got to do more horror reviews next week, so um, keep an eye out for those. I think I probably just want to check out, like, I'll probably do one or two other super villain reviews over the next week just because some of them are just really cool like really scary looking dudes kind of like Wendigo here where this dude will not only kill you but he'll eat you which you know freaks out a lot of people including me but until next time folks